Well, hi there, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. I am continuing with this wonderful series where I'm interviewing creatives, musicians, authors, writers, content creators, and anyone really who is diving in, you know, kind of grappling with the courage to present and share with the world um, and listening to the joys and also the challenges of what that looks like. And today I'm really thrilled to have the most wonderful author with us. Her name is Helena Goldstein, and she's an author of numerous books that include spiritual poetry, fiction, nonfiction, and she is also the founder of Joyful, no, let me get this right, the founder of Awakening to Joyful Living, the founder of Awakening to Joyful Living. So I'd love to invite her maybe to start there to let us know what that's all about um, mm -hmm. and to maybe say a little bit about where she's at right now and what she's working with and, um, you know, trying to bring out into the world. So welcome, Helena. It's lovely to have you with us. Thank you, Julie. And I'm so glad to be here. I'm very curious to, to what unfolds between us. And um, and and I just love what you do because creativity is maybe one of the most important uh, experience we can have as human being. And 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 it's uh, this is where all our potential is. This is where all our hope is, and this is where there's so much joy. So, so I'm so glad that you're exploring it and supporting so many people in finding their creativity. Right? Yes. Just, we we are just mirrors for them. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And you're based in Denmark, is that correct? Yes, yes. I'm originally from Poland, but I came to Denmark when I was very young, at 16. So I've lived here for like half a century. And <laughs> here yes. I am in Denmark, yes. Yeah, so I, I was really intrigued when I read that you started your spiritual journey, I think, in the, in the 70s. Is that correct? Yes, yes. It started when I was eighteen. I I was I was lucky. I, I there was a high school friend uh, who um, who started doing transcendental meditation. So she asked me if this was something I would be interested in, and and for some reason I said yes, even if I I didn't even know I was interested in it. But but I went with her, and and that meant that my meditation practice started there, and then took different forms along the way. But but the door was opened, um, and and I've been exploring in different ways, uh, uh, different modalities, different teachers, and at some point no teacher at all, and just going directly to the source as much as I possibly could uh, so so I've been very blessed this way uh, which doesn't mean that that you know that I had everything figured out far 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 from it <laughs> yeah yes but, but the door was there the opening was there yes and you know the thing that I really love about any kind of shift of consciousness or awakening or whatever you want to call it is that somehow it unleashes this creative force because, you know, I really believe that one's spiritual and creative energy is really one and the same. Um, and what happens is, and it's certainly been true in my case, is we're led into these kind of new arenas, so to speak, where we can share these new gifts or maybe gifts that are more refined and, and somehow find a new voice for them. And is that what happened in your case with respect to your writing? Yeah, that is so interesting that you bring it in. Uh, and actually, for me, it started not well. I I did start with writing when I was very young. That was for me back then. It was a, a way of expressing all the pain that I was moving through. Um, but but then, and also before that, I I played music. It was a very important part of my life, and and writing was actually secondary. But but. What happened for me actually was that it was music that became this place of conversation with, or place of meeting, direct meeting with the source you could see. Yes, I was meditating as I was at the time reading books, et cetera, et cetera. But the real, the deepest connection was in the, when, when I was playing music, I would improvise. So it was like meditative music. 
And and during, and it, it, it was for years that I first did it for myself and then played for other people. But but what was happening was that on one hand, I was finding and refining, as you said, my inner connection uh, with source. And at the same time, I was expressing it further so they could mirror the same, they could m- listen to it, they could mirror the same, themselves in it, and they could uh, hopefully find their own connection. So it was very much through music. And uh, and the interesting part was that at the time I used to say to people, uh, the this the connection with the inner is is such that I would never be able to express it in words. So that's why I play music. And the next thing that happened was that back in I think it was two thousand and five or something, so almost twenty years ago, the music died. <laughs> <laughs> it was gone, and I felt very, very strong impulse to start writing. So it was almost like a cosmic joke, you know. After saying again and again and again, you can only express these things through through sound and not through words. Something said right, and now try to start start expressing it through words. Yeah. Um, so I started writing stories, um, and and poetry came like little by by little, and then intensified in the, in the recent years actually but it was um it it was words became like a way of you know is it possible after all to, to build a bridge between the inner and the outer the, between what we express and which is beyond words and what we still want to express in words does that make sense i hope it does yes yeah <laughs> but, i mean yeah. I, uh, you know i really love the fact that that my story is similar Oh, in, in that, you know, I was always, you know, very interested in art and I used to sort of create and paint and draw and all of those mm-hmm. things. And, it, you know, went on to train to be an art teacher, um, which is, you know, my how I earn my living. Um, and then after a radical awakening, even though I continued with art and it's still a big part of my life, this other door opened mm-hmm. with respect to writing. And so, the only way I can explain it is that. It's almost like a download. I hear the words and I just write them down. Um, you know, and obviously you have to kind of, if you're writing a book or whatever it is, you still have to do your, the editing part of that. Mm-hmm. But 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 there's a purity in that sort of deliverance, so to speak, in, in the receiving of that, which carries this energy, this pure energy, as you said, from source itself. And the thing that I discovered is that the 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 energy of that and and the words behind the energy of of, uh, that were behind the words um, was having an effect on the reader Mm -hmm. Uh, they were going into that place themselves and often having an awakening experience themselves so so because of that you know I continued with it because I saw evidence of it it wasn't even that I was consciously aware of what was happening Mm -hmm. when I was doing it and writing it and sharing it and all of those things it was it was later that I began to hear testimonies from people that had read the work Mm -hmm. and I think that's true too in music and in art when it comes from that place when it comes from source it's it's Mm -hmm. almost like this this passageway or doorway as you said into the divine and 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 into really what we've always been longing for and looking mm. for mm. Mm. yes exactly yes so it's it's amazing that you know that that you know and also part of that is having the courage to go with the flow of that and to maybe go into new areas of expression that you really don't know much about um and um, and sharing it with the world. Mm, yes, uh, playing music this way, but you know, without a score and just you know, tone by tone, uh, was a it was a very good school for me. It was a good teacher for me because it requires so much trust. So so uh, even if I, I remember when it started happening with the words, what you just described, it was on different levels of it at different points there was still some fear coming out like you know what will come out of this mouth or of this pen 
uh, because fear it, it's uh, we have to get through that so so and i did certainly too but it was a it was a good school to 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 learn to trust uh, that voice and, and that energy and it is so very true that 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 the, the words or tones or paintings they they are something in itself and they're also carriers of the of the energy um and and that said, I, I don't know if you had that experience too, but but for me there are like different expressions. There's like a whole rainbow of, of expressions, and and some of them are are the pure experiences of pure challenging, channeling, challenging channeling <laughs> that that um, that happens. But there are also other uh, expressions, um, for example, with stories where I'm being kind of led and 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 teased to create a story a story that people can relate to and that is not in itself a channeled work but it is guided work and um and it is fun yes. <laughs> uh, but it is also deeply meaningful and and what i notice is that it's a way of of bringing what i because I, I was working as a coach and mentor for many, many years, it is a way of bringing the, that essence through in the form of stories, uh, not as like messages, you should do this, or this is yes. the way to do it, but as, as stories, as experiences, as feelings, as that people can, again, can mirror themselves in. And, and I love that process also because it is a very creative process where there's like a dance between guidance and intuition and just the human experience and innovation and creativity and and, and all of a sudden something comes out of it that, that others can read. Yeah, you know, and all of that is very much the yogic way. You know, master yogis mm -hmm. will often tell stories. They'll tell True. funny stories, anecdotes and whatever. True, yes. Um, and, and, it, and it's really a way of inviting the seeker into the story, to, you know, to recognize those aspects of him or herself so that they can learn from them and also receive this, this transmission of energy that is gifted in the, in the story. And it's just a wonderful way of, of, of sharing this flow from source um, and in a way that is kind of just easy because, you know, as kids, we're used to when we were kids, we're used to just sitting and opening up and listening to stories. And storytelling is just this magical way to connect in with self. And, um, Absolutely. Yes. And, and it really works. <laughs> yes. So, so can you just t tell us a little bit about because, um, you, you know, I read that you are the founder of Awakening to Joyful Living. Can you just detail what that is and what that looks like? In case yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really more, uh, I, I see that this at this time as, as a path uh, that has been my path, but that I have been also sharing with others. And, and it was, you know, I've been, as, again, I've been teaching and mentoring uh, for most of my life. And, uh, like so many of us, you know, the creativity was there too. So, so the the business and the creation had different names and different expressions. And uh, I knew from for a pretty long time that it was all about joy. It was all about uh, connecting with that essence of ours, which, by the way, is very close to creativity, also as we know. But, but it was all about that, and uh, and it is a an awakening process a continuous and awakening process but but I really didn't the name came to me not long maybe a few years ago really you know I was I don't know you know it's how it happens you just you know walk around in your room and then it comes <laughs> so uh, this long name and and it's it's pretty accurate that 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 this is I guess you could say my message or or my intention or my you know humble contribution is to uh, is to invite others to to that um, path of awakening to their own joy and and the enormous potential that is in that and and so again I've been doing it for, for, with mentoring and teaching which I don't do anymore um, and and now it's through stories and poetry and and a few nonfiction books but but it's kind of you know pointing you know there's something there. <laughs> 
Yes, um, and you, I, I think you do you have a Facebook group. I think you do. Yes, right? yes. There's a Facebook group for something that's called the Joy Keepers Network, which is like uh, a, a, a parallel creation, which, which is for for people to uh, people on a spiritual path to to connect with each other and help each other to hold this this high frequency of joy, um, and to uh, to in this way also share it more in the world. Wonderful. And do you do lives or is it uh, is it just through writing and sharing posts and things? We, we, we have a monthly meeting now where where we, we call it the Joy Keepers Cafe. So we start by, you know, chatting a little bit, just saying hi to each other. It's just a small group. And um, although it's growing at this time and and then we have a meditation, which is usually led by by my wonderful co-leader in the Joy Keepers Network. Her name is Sheila Applegate. She's an amazing guy for meditations. So we take this deep dive into a meditation, which creates, again, it's, it's a channeling. Uh, and then we talk about, you know, with each other, you know, what did you experience? It was wonderful sometimes to see how many parallels there are when, when people meditate, how, how it's really connected and connecting. And so we do that once a month. And now we're also doing a workshop. So, so there are some things happening. And in the past, there were like, you know, before COVID, there's before and after, right? So before COVID, there were more activities online. And then during COVID, people at, at first, you know, like many people discovered the wonder of, of online communication and then they really got fed up with it. So, yeah. so, so there was less interest in that kind of activities, but it seems like now it's coming back. So, so there might be more things coming. Yes. You know, I think that, as you said, there's a swing. Mm. You know, we were kind of forced in many ways to communicate online because mm. uh, certainly in the Bahamas, we were very locked down for mm. months and months and months. It's very strict. So that was a real blessing. And then there was a swing away. But now this kind of an evening out, I think, and I, wh what I'm seeing and hearing mm. is a longing for the, a deeper connection, mm. going deeper and really getting clear about, you know, where you are where each mm. one of us is right now in this craziness that's happening in the world. Mm. Mm. And there's a, there's definitely a stronger need to, to have heartfelt connections um, and to really lean into one's own integrity and truth mm. um, and, and, and live true to that, you know, whatever that looks like. So, yeah. so finding community you know, is, is important, I think, to help support that because it's not easy. Yeah, I, I agree. And and also there's I, I don't know if, if if well this is how I see it at least, is that you know for, for all these decades where, where I've been teaching and you've been doing it your your teaching, there was in the beginning or in the first decades, there was like, you know, I'm the teacher, you're the student, I'm the leader, you're the lab, but to say it like very very black and white, but there was like this tendency. Um, and along the way, uh, uh, it has become less and less necessary and less and less needed. And I and I feel that people are more and more interested not in being taught and shown, but in finding out themselves and exploring themselves. And and that is that also is an invitation to us as teachers or, or mentors. How how can we support that process? So kind of step back a little. Uh, perhaps uh, and 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 support that that process of discovery, um, where there are perhaps more questions than answers. Um, I, I I don't even know if that's true, but but there is something about it. I think and creativity has has a has a, a a role to play in that too, because this also is a way of exploring what is my truth, what is my expression, what is my connection, who am I, and all that. Yes, yes. I mean, I love what you said, because I'm really, excuse me, I'm really with you 100%. I think mm -hmm. the phase or the time of having, let's say, a guru or a teacher, you know, a spiritual teacher as an elevated being, <clears throat> excuse me, and the rest of us somewhere lower down um, is over. Mm. It's completely finished. And it's time for, you know, everyone to start recognizing that within themselves, is the um, ability and the capacity to, to 
recognize and dive into the source that they're already connected to and with. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, I think what I, f- I feel like more of a facilitator, so to speak, and, you know, my message has always been the same. It's never, never shifted or changed, really. And it's mm-hmm. about, you know, trust yourself, mm-hmm. listen to your own inner guidance, you know, um, pay attention to what's happening within you. You know, notice, look for signs and symbols in your own life because it's all, always there, the message mm. and the guidance and support is always there. But of course, again, it's not so easy for people. So, um, you know, I'm just there to kind of facilitate and support that. And it sounds like you've been doing the same work. Yes, it, it, it's true. And, and you know, it comes to mind now that, for example, with, with creative expression, uh, artistic expression, there are... There are no answers in that. I can write a poem and I can share it, but I cannot read it for someone. And 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 hopefully the poem has so many layers and so many like can be turned around like like a little diamond or something. And people can so everyone can look at it in their own way. And that is much more open in a way, or a story for that matter, that can be understood in so many ways, or a film, a book, a story, uh, a painting. It can be, you cannot like in, interpret it and say, this is it. It, is, it depends completely on the, on the recipient of it. And, and that's a beautiful way of, of, of inviting people to, uh, um, and ourselves to explore things like, what do I see in this now? What do I see in the same thing in a month from now or, or a day from now? Um, and it's it's a it's an open creative process that continues uh, as opposed to a teaching that that can have this tendency to 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 become a little bit like you know this is how it looks so this is the way or this is the method etc etc i'm exaggerating because it's difficult to, to to talk about these things but but i think creativity has uh, creative expression has a big role to play in that yes yes you know and i love that with uh, you know everybody can relate to creativity right and mm-hmm. and recognize you know uh, am i utilizing my creativity or am i not utilizing my mm-hmm. creativity and I've certainly, you know, in all the years I've been teaching, I've heard students say, oh, I can't draw, I can't paint, you know, I'm no good at art, all of those things, which of course isn't true. And I have great fun proving that actually they're <laughs> very creative and actually they do have skills and talents. And actually, you know, it is a doorway into connecting, you know, inside oneself, into the silence, into the mystery. Yeah. Um, and that has been really wonderful. But, you know, the thing that I'm seeing now is that I think in many ways um, the spiritual kind of arena or spiritual expression has been a bit hijacked because it's become monetized. Mm-hmm. And um, I think using the sort of the creative expression and allowing people to connect in with that is, is, a, is a much kind of healthier and freer way of doing it, so to speak, mm-hmm. because, because there's less baggage. I think there's a lot of baggage around some of the spiritual terms, um, you know, and, and, and there's been oftentimes people have been pulling away from, from sort of organized religion and trying to find their way. And the sort of creative path is, is less kind of loaded. <laughs> true, very true. I didn't think about it this way. Yes, yes, I see that. You know, and it's a, it's essentially open to everyone, any age, any ethnicity, any mm. background, no matter, you know, where you're coming from or what you you plan to do with your life and all of those things. It's kind of a, in many ways, a safer option. And it's, it is, it's less kind of weighed down <laughs> with yeah. old beliefs. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think this is, this, it's almost like um, everybody's giving birth, so to speak to their own uh, newer, more refined ways of, of, of expressing who they are, find, discovering who they are mm. through, through, this, through this connection. Mm. It, is, it is really, uh, yes, I see that. And, you know, for some, some reason, I, I, I think the word courage comes, comes to mind, that, that 
that it is a freer space, but it's still takes courage. It it this it is still a need to to support each other in yes. in going there because uh, it can be difficult to understand. I've seen it. I'm, I'm sure you have too. That that some people they say like they know they have this creative space within, and they stand like on the threshold, and 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 there's fear there because it is a very open space it is a powerful space it is a space where the truth and maybe a, a truer sense of identity lies it is a place where they everything can change and it is a place where there's just a, even without like defining the energy it's like it's a, it's an intense place energy wise there is there's a lot of energy there yes. so 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 <laughs> So and it, it can be vulnerable. So so it's so important that 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 we create forms and spaces where 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 people you spoke about commun communities before where people can do it perhaps with a community or or find support in a community. Um, I have a, a colleague, a friend. Her name is Eva Andrea. She has a place that's called uh, Magical Writers Tribe. And I see that so much in that tribe, how many people there are that come like with that vulnerability. They never shared any written word with anyone before. Now they can do it. And it's such a delicate, uh, delicate place to be. It's important that we create these, these places and support each other in doing that. Don't you find? Yes, yes. Because also, mm -hmm. um, as I shared earlier, you know, I, I, I've certainly worked with many, many young people and adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who carry the weight of a label they were handed when they were young. For example, mm. you know, I had a teacher who said, oh, you know, your drawing, you know, isn't very good or, you know, maybe some yeah. sort of judgmental comments. And then they take that on as being fact. And then they live under the weight of that um, and, and, and respond in that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because none of that is true. It's just, it's just not true. Mm. Um, so it's really about just... Yes, having someone who can at least support or keep keep that safe space so that they can make their own discoveries rather than, you know, having somebody saying, oh, you know, you have to draw or paint or, or, or create music this way. Yeah, yeah. I'm so curious now because because you say that that you work with young people. I, I tend to work with to my age, so the really mature people, uh, age-wise at least, we are. <laughs> but... But you work with young people, so can you can you see that there's like new tendency or a different uh, relationship with creativity, or do, do they move to the same stages as we did? Or I'm just curious. No, it's it's very different to uh -huh. how it used to be because um, you know there's still some fear there, I would say, but students now are much more connected in to their feeling nature. Mm -hmm. They're much more compassionate and concerned about others feelings mm -hmm. you know and obviously this is this is all to do with education and the sort of highlighting how to behave and how to respond to other people mm -hmm. um, and what I found is that they open up really dramatically and very quickly once they feel that they're seen and recognized mm -hmm. so you know the thing that I became aware of fairly recently through my writing actually is that you know, many years ago when I first started teaching, I, I would, I'd have students saying, you know, what color should I do this? Or what color, how should I paint that? And, you know, how should I do the background? And I would try and sort of help them and show them and all of that. Now, when they ask me that question, and I've done this for years now, mm -hmm. is I say, oh, I don't know what feels right to you. Mm -hmm. And, and then they'll, make suggestions and then we'll have a conversation based on what feels right for them so mm -hmm. they're more connected in and the thing that I've started to see even 20 years ago actually is that students would without me using the language of of, of mystics mm -hmm. and you know symbols and imagery that that relate to awakening I'd start to see those images in their artwork so I'd start to see peacock feathers and I'm still seeing peacock feathers and third mm -hmm. eyes and you know mandalas and dream mm -hmm. catchers and all of those things mm. so so they're they're connecting in and they're hearing and seeing and feeling 
and 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 expressing those images you know and obviously in a way that is comfortable to them but they're obviously going through their own process of awakening Mm -hmm. and you know what what was interesting was I taught a student I think in the 1990s or something like that mid to late 1990s and um I could feel you know even though I can't speak openly it's you know in a class set classroom setting about you know shakti pattern awakening and you know Mm. those things lucid dreaming and all those things there was there was a transference of energy and there was something that Mm. happened and it and and fairly recently this young woman reached out to me and told me that she'd had this massive awakening in the art class and she's been she'd been trying to sort of she, she didn't feel comfortable speaking to me about it but she knew something had happened and and I have seen it in the work that she's doing mm-hmm. since. And she's not the only one. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, so in answer, that's a long <laughs> response to your question. Oh, actually. but it's so important. So important. And and again, because what I also, the, the impression I get that, that the work happens on, on many levels, that there's the level where you teach art and there's the level where you guide them and there's the level where there's an energy transfer and there's a level where there's a collective awakening happening. And people can, like you know, like when reading a story or a poem, they can open the door that they're ready for. But there's more than one door available, more than one level available, and that's so beautiful. That's so mm-hmm. beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And we, you know, the thing is, is we never know how we're affecting someone. I mean, it might be mm-hmm. years later that, you know, you discover, and it's probably a good thing that we don't know. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> you go and yeah. say, look at me, you know, I did so well. I'm so clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's one part of it. But the other, another part of it is that, I know that I, I had this struggle at some point, and then when I shared with with other writers, when especially when they published their first book, they're like, oh, this is such a relief. When I tell them, you know what, when someone reads your book, they really don't care about you. They only, they see themselves, they read themselves, they care about themselves, and that's how it's supposed to be. So it's not about you. You do not stand naked there. You mm-hmm. just provide something that they can stand naked for themselves, so to speak. And that's such a relief. It's yes, not, it's not about us. Yes, we are but, mirrors for each other, and that, that's all. <laughs> yeah, because I, I'm so glad you brought that up, Alina. Because mm-hmm. you know, with the work I do with adults on connecting in and living true to their purpose and all of those things, you know, one of, one of the big fears, and I'm sure you've seen it too, it, mm-hmm. is the fear of being seen. Mm-hmm. You know, if I write my story that deals with my, you know, spiritual interests or, or, or my creativity or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, I, people will judge me. And there's this tremendous fear around judgment and mm-hmm. especially with the sort of spiritual expression. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and I always say, it really doesn't matter, you know, even if you went out there with a big placard, you know, those people that 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 don't want to see you and not interested won't won't even see you. And those mm-hmm. that do will be very grateful that you've you've shared and you've expressed, you know, what they're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's but it but but that fear is a is a big can be a big obstacle. So I love what you said about, you know, it's nothing to do with you. It's like, yeah, and matter. also, yeah, yeah, and also, you know, again, when I grew up, and, and I'm sure that's still the case in many places, is like we, we started talking about gurus and, and, you know, the guru and the disciple and the same, in the same way, you know, the artist and the rest. Yes. <laughs> the rest of us. And now there's much, I, I really get the picture as, as you speak, like, like we are a collective. We are we are these souls incarnated, and some know what to some degree what we're doing, and some don't, and it's just as good. But we all creating together, and we all showing different aspects of 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 this uh, unbelievable thing that's going on here. And but we're doing it together, so it's almost like you know, it's almost like as you know, and as a, a very big circle of friends, like yeah. billions of people, but like showing each other, I see this, and I see the, and I see that, and I, you know, and that also, it's not like again, it's not like you know, the artist, and then you know, all the rest, it's the poet, the this and that. 
it's it's all of us. It's yes. all of us like saying, this is how I see, this is how I see, this is, look what I can do and look what I can do. It's it's much more like equal yes. uh, in, in its essence and can be today. Yes. And isn't that beautiful? It is very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, Helena, I think, unfortunately, we've got to the end of our time. Um, mm -hmm. And before we close out, I would love for you to share with the viewers how you how they can find you and um, connect with you. Thank you. And so thank you for creating this conversation. And thank you to everyone who was listening to our creative play here. Um, and uh, I have a website that's called halinagold.com. So Halina, like my first name, and then gold, G-O-L-D, dot com. And there you can find my books and, uh, yeah, see what's possible. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Halina, thank you so, so much. This has been a really, really beautiful conversation, and I would love to invite you to come back sometime when you have some time. Um, and continue this conversation because I think it's really important. We need this today in this world and we need to be able to share and reflect, you know, back to one another, the truth of who we really are. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you again for creating this space and, and, and opening all these doors. And it will be my pleasure. It will be my thank pleasure. You. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. And if you like the content on this channel, please subscribe. Subscribe and please share. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye.